thank you very much for inviting me to give this talk. I'm very honored to give it. I'm gonna talk about the um, strangeness of water. Um, we live on a blue planet, um, which is mostly water and all life requires water, um, probably everywhere in the universe. But water is very strange and it has more than 75, what we might call anomalies. And I've chosen the ones I think are the strangest. Um, some of these you might not understand because I've only got a few minutes to deal with them, but we can come back to them if you don't understand them. First off, we're very lucky on Earth that um, we've got the right temperature for water to be a, a gas, a liquid or a solid. Um, no other materials could manage that. Um, it has a, water has an unexpectedly high melting point. We might not think it's high, it seems low, but it, it is high compared with other materials. And the solid ice is unusually, it's less dense than the liquid. Most solids are more dense. Um, this ice then protects us against temperatures falling too quickly. And it also insulates the water underneath. Both of these are very important properties. And in fact, if the, um, the strength of, of linkage between the water molecules was just 10% greater, then we'd have a frozen Earth. Just a, that small amount greater attraction between the molecules. And if it was a 30% less, we'd have a boiling Earth. So we're, 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 we're just right. And so why is liquid so special? That's the first, uh, first question you should ask. And the answer is rather strange. Um, it does not consist of separate molecules. What we get is, is that we have clusters of molecules and you should see there's three water molecules here, H2Os, and they constantly change. They're linked together, they're attracted together, but they constantly change such that you can see that this molecule here, oops, um, no, long, no longer changed into the previous. In, in, into another molecule. I, I, I'm trying not to hit this button again. <laughs> water is, is, sim is, is different from simpler molecules due to its hydrogen bonding. These are the links between molecules. Um, on, on the overhead here, you can see that these, are, these little men are meant to be the water molecules and they can hold on to each other by their hands or their feet. And they have these linkages together, which holds them all together, mainly in these sort of tetrahedra. The cohesion, the, the strength of force between the molecules is in the, what we call the Goldilocks zone. It's just right. It's neither too weak nor too strong. If it was any weaker or stronger, we would not be alive. Not as us. Now, Almost all liquids expand on heating, and we're used to this in the thermometer, where the, the volume increases as the temperature increases. That's what liquids should do. But water um, is different. Um, from a temperature around about four degrees, the, um, the volume actually goes up, whether we're heating or cooling. So we, at that temperature, even as we, if we cool water, it actually expands. The opposite of what we expect with temperature. And water is at its densest at four degrees, um, just below, what, just above what we think of as, as freezing temperature. And this allows ice to form quickly on the top and it insulates the water underneath. Um, and so the fish underneath are, are quite happy. This is supposed to be a smiling fish. If this didn't happen, and it only takes a 2% loss in the attraction between water molecules, um, then uh, this effect would go. We wouldn't have that thing. And, and the whole of the pond of water or lake of water would have to freeze before you got ice, slushy ice on the top. And this is meant to be an unhappy fish down there. And again, it, to thaw, you'd have to thaw the whole lot, not just the ice on the top. So liquids 
are expected to expand when heated. Most things we think of expanding when they're heating, but heated. But as you warm cold water, it shrinks. The actual water shrinks as you warm it. And also the, the molecules get smaller. So as you warm them, the molecules get smaller. It's rather strange. Uh, the, act, the actual numbers might not mean a lot, perhaps because of the, the a picometer is not a very large um, distance, but it just shows as we go up from four degrees to 50 degrees, um, the, the, the molecule has got smaller. So as we heat it, the molecules shrink. Now, one thing we, it's rather strange is that, uh, that most liquids um, actually dissolve more gas as you heat them. Um, we don't always recognize that because we only really see water. But for example, argon solubility, argon's in, in the atmosphere at 1%, in, its solubility increases as the temperature goes up. In water, it, it's different. As you heat water, the solubility of argon goes down. And we get the same effect if we go using oxygen or, or, or other of our common gases. So it's water is behaving totally different to most liquids. And in fact, it, 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 we tend to think that this is what all liquids do, but it isn't. It's only very few where this happens. Uh, now, another very strange thing about water is that you can get liquid water at minus 130 degrees centigrade. That's a long way down. And not only can you get liquid water, you can get two liquid waters at that low temperature. And they're so cold, in fact, that they're, they're too cold to form ice. Um, you have to warm them up before these waters, these liquid waters form ice. Here is a picture of the two liquid waters. I've actually, we formed glasses. So we, we, to be able to photograph them, you have to take them down even colder and they do form a glass. But as you warm these glasses up, they form liquids at very low temperatures. So both a high density liquid and a low density liquid are possible. The other strange thing about water is that the molecules move closer as its volume increases. So as we, the volume of the water gets greater, the molecules get closer together. Quite the opposite of what you might expect. And here we see that difference between liquid water at four degrees and minus six degrees, um, where we're looking at the volume of a kilogram, the actual molecules um, get closer together, even though the volume goes up. And that's in liquid water. And also in ice, you get the same thing. The volume of ice um, is, is much greater than the uh, water, but the distance between molecules is even closer. It seems impossible. It's not, though. And uh, another thing, do liquids shrink when you put them under pressure? Well, well all liquids shrink when you put them under pressure. However, um, if you pre compress cold water, um, the molecules get bigger. So you've got the cold water, you're crushing it, but the molecules in inside get bigger, even though you crush them all. And here you can see there's a distance again, the size of the molecule. Also, as you crush water, rather strangely, the molecules move faster. Generally, if you crush any material, you'd expect the molecules to move less fast got less space, but water molecules move faster when you crush it. Now, if you put pressure on li most liquids, the molecules um, get closer as you put the, the pressure on the water. As you crush it, the molecules actually move closer together. And wa water does this up to a point, but if you go to higher pressures, so you're in, still increasing the pressure here, increasing the pressure. The molecule, the, the water molecules are actually um, getting further apart. So you're compressing the water. You're allowed to compress water, compressing the water, but the molecules are moving further apart. 
That one usually puzzles most people the most. Now, most cold liquids freeze quicker than hot liquids. It seems reasonable. If you start as a hot liquid and you cool it down, it's got to become a cold liquid before it freezes. Um, but water is different. Um, hot water freezes quicker than cold, at least most of the time. Um, and here you have a, you have a graph um, where the, um, the time of freezing, this is a long time at, at the top here, at the top left, this is a short time, depending on the start temperature. So at, uh, at 350 degrees, it actually freezes in about six minutes. But at um, 290 degrees, it took 20 minutes to freeze. That's a real strange thing. And that's still, still puzzling people today with various people having different views on why it happens. But it does happen. There's, uh, there's over 20 different forms of ice. And um, which, is, which is a large number. L lots of materials do have more than one form of their ice, but um, 20 is a large number for I number of ices. So if we start off with liquid water and we simply lower the temperature, we get something which is known as ice one. However, if we keep the temperature the, the same, keep the temperature at, at our a normal temperature and put pressure on it, we can get ice seven. As I say, there's more than 20. So, and in ice seven actually has the same structure as ice one, except it's all crushed together. So whereas we get in ice one, we get big spaces between the water molecules. In ice seven, these spaces are filled up with another, effectively another, uh, 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 another penetrating framework that goes th through all the structures. And there's, there's so many different structures of ice, it's really fascinating subject in its own. Now, most liquids freeze under pressure. Um, so, so just, just by putting pressure on, a li on the liquid, you can get them to turn into a solid. However, if you put pressure on, on ice, it melts. So you've got, if you have ice and you put pressure on it, it melts. You, you might see this when you're ice skating, for example. But here is a very easy example you can show to your grandchildren. Um, that, that's me talking because I have grandchildren. Other people might have just children. <laughs> uh, but simply putting a, a thin cotton um, or, or, or wire, attach it to something heavy, um, put it over the top of an ice cube, that the, the, the wire will gradually go through the ice and come out the other side. So the wire has gone all the way through the ice. So it's melted the ice as it's gone through, but then the ice reforms um, as, as the wire passed through. So you end up with the, uh, the same ice cube at the end, although you've gone all the way through it. One, one thing is, is quite, quite strange with water, but uh, it, again, we come across it every day, perhaps. Liquid water can be both slippery and sticky at the same time, which is, is quite interesting. And you can see this, it's a diagram I've made of two panes of glass because I didn't have two handy. If you have two panes of glass and they're dry, you can separate them quite easily, but they don't run over each other very easily. However, if they're wet panes of glass, there's no way you can pull the top pane away from the bottom pane. You just, have, you just can't do it. It's, so they're stuck firmly together. However, if you go sideways, of course, it's extremely slippery. So it, it seems obvious once you've seen it, but to begin with saying it's slippery and sticky at the same time doesn't seem so obvious. Another thing which people often talk about is does water have memory? There's lots of th ways in which you can understand what memory means, but just simply, of course it has memory. Um, if you've got two glasses of water and you stir one of the glasses of water and you're in a chemistry lab with the right equipment, you can easily tell, one, even once the water stopped moving, of course you can easily tell which one was stirred. So it's, it's got a memory there somewhere, 
It might not be the way other people think of a memory of water, but this is the simplest one to do um, today. Um, now, another strange thing about water is that you can have a water bridge. And so there's a little video here showing what happens to be two beakers of water um, with a large voltage put across them. The voltage is large enough that you don't put your fingers in it. Um, not if you want to see what's happening. Um, but as you pull the beakers apart, a, a bridge of water formed. We haven't, we haven't put straws or anything in here. The water simply climbed out of one beaker. It, it seemed to know that there was another beaker next, next door. Very strange. The water climbs up and then forms a bridge. Which, which is, I think, one of the fa most fascinating things. It's, it, it's been, been around for over a hundred years, this um, factor. We, we, we seem to know what's going on, but it's still not perfected exactly what's going on. But you can see now, this is a very long horizontal, lot of water. It's not dripping down, no drips. It's just connecting the two. And, it, and it, I think it's rather amazing. Another thing, very strange thing about water is the fact that it contains nanobubbles. Now, nanobubbles are very, very small bubbles that you can't see. So you get a glass of water out of your tap, it contains nanobubbles. It just looks clear. If you actually shine a laser through it, so that here we've got a laser coming through it, um, you can actually pick up the nanobubbles in the in the solution because the um, light bounces off of them. Whereas if you've got no nanobubbles, you don't see anything. Now th this is in all waters, and and it, in, it, it gives the water very unusual properties, really, because it doesn't happen with other liquids. With with uh, other liquids, that don't contain water, really. And it, the, these nanobubbles help flavour the water. So a lot of the times when you've got different flavoured waters or just simply different waters out of different taps, um, the some of the flavour is given you by the nanobubbles and what they have on their surfaces. In a glass of champagne, um, then you can have up to a million bubbles. And these are formed from nanobubbles to begin with. They weren't there in the bottle. The bubbles, you couldn't see the bubbles in the bottle, but once you open the bottle, you got the nanobubbles. And those nanobubbles give you all the bouquet that you need. And that is where I finished. Thank you very much.